So welcome everybody. My name is Shiri Orion. I'm the executive director of the American Friends of the Parent Circle. And for those of you joining us for the first time, the Parent Circle is a joint Israeli-Palestinian organization made up of six, more than 600 bereaved families. All of the families have lost a loved one to the conflict and all of them have chosen a path of peace rather than revenge. Um, we have some of our members here today, uh, two bereaved mothers, Robbie Damlin from Jaffa and Bushra Awad from Beit Umar. Um, Bushra is going to speaking, be speaking to us in Arabic. So if you are just joining us, please click on the globe icon below and click on English. This is our final webinar of 2021. And as we look back on 2021, we undoubtedly have to remember the terrible violence that took place uh, in May in Israel. It was called the Guardian of the Walls. By Palestinians, it was known as the war on Gaza. And this cycle of violence, this war had terrible lasting impacts, but the worst of it all was the death of 68 children. Their names, we will see their names. Christopher will show us their names. Um, 66 and two Israeli. There are 68 young innocent lives lost. There they are. Can you zoom in, Christopher? Let's just take a minute and, and look at these names. These are all young innocent lives lost needlessly. 68 futures, 68 new families devastated by grief. And it's hard to know how to process such a terrible tragedy. Even Is that even possible to process something? It's hard to know how do you do, what to do with that kind of information. One response came from a group of Israeli illustrators who joined together to create illustrations commemorating the children. One illustration for each child. Some of the illustrations memorialize their lives, some of their and their personalities, some their hopes and their dreams. And together, these 68 illustrations made up a beautiful and heartbreaking exhibit, which was showcased in Tel Aviv this past November. Joining us today are some of those uh, illustrators, Or Sega and Amit Trainin. And we'll hear from them shortly. I just tell you a little bit about them. Hi, Or, hi, Amit. Or Segal is the curator of the exhibit. She's an Israeli illustrator and graphic designer. She's a graduate of Beth Israel's Betzalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem's Department of Visual Communications. Also joining us is Amit Trainin, who is an Israeli illustrator and lecturer in the Department of Visual Communications at Betzalel Academy of Art and Design. His works have won awards. He's been published in magazines and books in Israel and around the world and featured in museums like the Museum of Islam, the Haifa Museum and more. And he works from his studio in Tel Aviv, Israel where he's joining us from today. Um, we have two bereaved mothers with us that I mentioned earlier. We have uh, Israeli Robbie Damlin from Jaffa and uh, Palestinian bereaved mother Bushra Awad from Beit Umar. And um, I'm gonna just mention again, Bushra is gonna be speaking to us in Arabic today. So for those of you who have joined us a little late, you should click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and select English. Also, we have um, closed captioning services available. So if you need, need closed captioning, you can click on live transcript on the bottom. We're gonna hear from some of our speakers and then we have them for an hour today and we'll open it up to questions and answers. We also have a beautiful video that we're gonna be sharing with you. But Or, I wanna start with you. Oh, also we have a very important guest that I forgot to mention, Basem. He's the Happy Canada, Canada Day image that you see on your screen. Um, Basem is our translator. Thank you, Basem, for joining us. Um, so Or, 
you initiated this exhibit. You initiated this exhibit during a very difficult time. Tell us what inspired you. Tell us about your process of putting this together and, and how you, your reflections on it now. Uh, hi, hi Shiri, hi everyone. Uh, thank hi. you for having me first. Uh, I uh, started the project, as you said, during the round of fighting. Um, I wanted to do something gentle and peaceful because it was very chaotically outside. And I, I wanted a way to express protest and to say that the things are, that are happening is wrong and that we can do something different. Um, so I am, as you said, a designer and the illustrator. So I did what I know to do. And I reached out to my fellow students and my lecturers and some of my friends and my favorite illustrators. And I asked them to draw, to draw an illustrator uh, in the memory of a child. Um, we didn't know everything that was happening during the, the fighting and more and more information came and the list became longer as we drew. Um, so this and after all of it, I think that uh, I think that the courage of the illustration of the illustrators is the knowing that this is criticism about ourselves and calling us the Israelis to do something differently. And uh, this is what we wanted to say and uh, do. Wow, thank you. It, it was really a peaceful and gentle and beautiful way to do that. And I wanna share with you a video now that shows the opening night of the exhibit in, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, and um, showing so many members of the parent circle will, were there to come and be a part of this. נכנסתי פה את הילד, רוכב על הפיל, והכנסתי לפה את המשפחה שהבנתי שהייתה אחיות שלו, את ההורים, והם בים. הילד בתמונה הוא כן מחייך, היה חשוב לי לתפוס איזושהי נאיביות של ילד, איזשהו חיוך קטן. בעוד שהצבעים הם מאוד קודרים, ציירתי את חוסיין חמד, בעצם הציור הוא למשפחה שלו. ציירתי אנדרטה לזכר שלושה אחים שנהרגו במהלך סבב הלחימה, אז ציירתי שלוש קוביות משחק. מה שתפס אותי בסיפור שלהם זה שאנחנו שלושה אחים, ופתאום דמיינתי אותנו. זאת הארוחה שמוקדשת לזכרה של 68 ילדים. שמתו סתם, ללא שום מטרה, ללא שום הצדקה, רק בגלל שאין שלום. תוך כדי שומר חומות, בזמן המבצע התחלתי את הפרויקט, לעשות משהו שלא יהיה מתסיס ולא יהיה אלים בתוך כל ה... בלאגן והכאוס שהיה. המטרה תוך כדי המבצע הייתה לעשות פעולה מאוד מהירה ומאוד ספונטנית. אז פניתי לקהלים שאני מכירה, וביקשתי מהם לאייר עבודות לזכר ילדים שנהרגו במבצע. הנתון הוא ילד שאתה לא מכיר, כל מה שאתה יודע עליו זה הסוף, ופתאום כשאתה עובר על הרשימה ואתה קורא את השמות בשתי השפות, וזו רשימה לקונית יבשה, שכל מה שמצוין זה שם הילד. או הילדה, גיל, והמקום שבו הם נהרגו. זה מצמרר, זה קשה מאוד, אתה רק רוצה לבכות. בגלל שהפרויקט נהגה באמצע המבצע, אז עוד לא היה את המספרים הסופיים. הגיעה אלינו רשימה שהמשיכה גם להתעדכן. אין לי כוח אמיתי בידיים. 
אני סתם, אני סטודנטית, הרגשתי שיש לי דרך להגיד משהו. רציתי פשוט שיהיה לי קול, שיה, שיהיה דרך להגיד זה לא סבבה, זה לא, זה לא מתקבל על הדעת ש, שילדים מתים סתם. אני חושבת שבן אדם בא והוא רואה תמונה והוא מבין על שם מי זה הילד הזה, זה הופך אותו להיות אמיתי. זה לא איזה מספר בעיתון. להתעסק בילדים זה להתעסק בחפים מפשע. אני חושבת שזה דבר ש... שהוא מכנה משותף להרבה אנשים. יש כאן 68 אנשים עם 68 דעות, אבל כולם מבינים שצריך לעשות איזשהו שינוי. אם אתה מדגיש את הכאב שלך, זה סימן שאתה חי או נמצא, ואם אתה מדגיש את הכאב של האחרים, זה סימן שאתה בני אדם. אני חושבת שהאומץ שלכם ליצור זה בהבנה שזו ביקורת על עצמנו וקריאה לפעולה שלנו. ואני מקווה בשביל עצמי בעיקר, אבל גם בשביל כולנו, שזו נקודה קטנה בתוך הדרך האקטיביסטית של כל אחד ואחד. כמה זה חשוב שאנחנו נבין מה הערך של החיים. כי המשפחות שנשארות אחרי שהילד מת, אני יודעת מה זה. המשפחות שנשארות זה כאילו שמישהו לקח חור בתוך הלב שלהם, וזה אף פעם לא יהיה אותו דבר. שני בתי קברות גדולות לילדים שלנו ולעמים שלנו. אני חושב שהדם של הילדים הללו יותר קדוש מכל אבן קדוש באדמה הזאת. Um, one of the, the illustrators that Orr reached out to was Amit, Amit Trenin, and we're lucky to have him here with us today. Um, hi. Hi. Tell us, Amit, when Orr reached out to you, what made you say yes? Um, it wasn't even a question. Uh, it was very clear to me that I'm going to say yes, and that I'm going to call other peers of mine and other students of mine to uh, take part. Um, I think apart from the fact that I knew Or, and I couldn't say no to Or, even she would ask me even harder question uh, or something else to do um, because we were working very close at the time. She was doing her essay uh, and I was guiding her. Uh, but apart from that, uh, when she came with, up with this idea, I, th I thought, wow, this is such an... Uh, brave in one way, uh, nat natural when you think about all, and I know her previous past when she was, she was always active about those things. So it was very natural to me that all oh, will uh, we'll do something like that. And um, I, first of all, I want to do it as an Israeli, as a human being and an Israeli. Uh, to say something in my own field, which is illustrate, illustration. Um, and when, uh, so it, I didn't even hesitate uh, for a second. And I thought this is a very unique way, instead of like going and demonstrating or writing on Facebook my own idea, it will give me, um, in a way, the privilege to actually do something positive by illustrating um, uh, for someone actually that I never knew, I never met. And there is not a, there, there isn't even, a, for a second I wasn't thinking uh, about the politician or political side or the fact that I'm afraid or my children are afraid. I just felt um, the need to, uh, uh, to act uh, through art. to act through uh, the fact that I'm actually drawing uh, for a child. It wasn't an easy thing to do, I have to say. Um, getting the, because the way we actually, I think you mentioned, it's been mentioned in the video, but the way it worked, that we received a list 
anonymous list, um, which was very painful to look at, and it was very painful to read. My first reaction was to look at the list and to ignore it. I couldn't bear looking at the, first of all, you look at the, the ages, and then you look at the names, because the names are names, but they, something about the age felt very uh, uh, horrible and um, to me. Um, and, and it's it's very hard to draw for a dead child. Uh, I never done it before, and it's I think it, you don't necessarily need to know the child in order to feel something for for him or for her. Um, and um, so to go back to your question, there wasn't any hesitation about you know taking part of that project. And it started, I just have to say that that project started as a, um, as an, uh, a web, uh, the work that was actually, uh, was doing for, uh, uh, for uh, Instagram and Facebook. It was just a thought about doing it as a web work. And it became, later it became also uh, a, show, a real physical show. Uh, which I did actually two different illustrations for th those two different uh, mm. occasions. The first one was different for the one that actually uh, my illustration on the end was different uh, from the one I did in the first round, I will say, it, when we actually draw for the uh, Instagram at first. Well, that, well, let's look at your illustration, Amit, because it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, Christopher, you're back. Good. Okay, so this was the first one. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, my illustration, of, I thought, was very different because from the rest. Because uh, the idea was actually to draw something for Ziad uh, Talbani. That's the kid that I uh, choose to draw for, that he was four years old. And on, the only thing I could think of is how this work will show in his, on his own room and how I can create uh, a fantasy of a child that lives in a completely different and better world than the one that he actually uh, physically lived in. Um, so I created this kind of fantasy jungle with the elephant in, uh, in the middle, um, like Arabic night, uh, mm. this kind of atmosphere that I thought would make him very happy if he would, you know, if he would be alive. Um, and I didn't want to draw the death. I didn't want to draw the sadness. I wanted to choose to draw something that it's completely on the other, on the other side will be positive and l lively and vibrant and not the other way around. Well, it really is beautiful and, and childish and, and lovely and vibrant in, in so many ways. Um, can I interrupt for a minute about that elephant? <laughs> How can you not? <laughs> can I? <laughs> because it's my favorite illustration because when we had the summer camp originally, um, I asked the kids, the Palestinian kids, what would you like to do in the summer camp? And one of the first things that they said is we want to see an elephant. And the other one was we want to go near water. Now think about that, how privileged our children are and how a Palestinian kid has to ask to see an elephant for the first time in their life when they're about 10 or 12. So that's very meaningful for me. And I think I want that picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, well, let's, let's look at, if you got or let's look at yours. Can we show ors, Christopher? No, no. Yes. Christopher can do anything. So or you weren't just the curator, you're also another illustrator. And, and this is Or's illustration. Or tell us about yours. Um I actually also did two illustrations. One for the web. Uh, for the Instagram and one for the exhibition. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of them are uh, for three brothers, uh, Amira, Islam, and Zayn. Um, I think that, uh, as you asked before, uh, things, 
thoughts are changing during a time. And the way I felt during the round of fighting was different than how I felt after. So the three, the three cubes represent the three children. Um, myself and my brothers are three children. Uh, my brother's name are Michael and Inbar. And I just couldn't stop thinking about us when I read about those three kids that were killed with, with their mother. Um, so this is it. Thank you. Are there some, can we look at some of the others for a second? Let's mm -hmm. pretend we're in a gallery and mm -hmm. we're sipping on something delicious and we're walking around and we're looking at these beautiful and heartbreaking illustrations and a meat or or if there's any in particular that stand out to you and you want to tell us something about them feel free mm, well that's mine um i i think all because you're the uh you actually know more than I, than i do about the behind the story about these illustrations if you can jump in and say i'm not sure even if i know who did what um this was uh, in Khalaz. Uh, she's a fellow graduate and um, the last one uh, one back i think that uh, what was unique about this process is that Many of the illustrators were strugg struggling. Um, in the day of the deadline, I got a lot of WhatsApp that from illustrator that they have an illustration, they do it, but they can send it. And we started talking about what does it mean to draw for, for a kid who killed. Um, I think that uh, here we can see a very um, hand hand whitened technique, and other illustration are very are very different. Uh, I think that I am connected to Nahala's work because she it, she works really like me. Um, this is Aya's illustration. Um, it was uh, also a portrait for a child. And uh, when she talked to me about it, she said that uh, she wanted to do something that if the parent's child will see, they will like. Um, can you go next? Keep going. Mm. Can you show the one with the tear? Show you know what, uh, Shiri, can we go back to that? I, I have a little story about that. Wait, hold on. I want to show this one. This one Wait. with the little boy and the flowers. Wait, hold on. This is my favorite one. Um, okay. It's kind yeah. of sad, but I think it's so it says so much. It's like, you know, we often say at the parent circle, our tears are the same color that the bereavement, that the grief, whether you're Israeli or you're Palestinian, the pain is the same pain. And that's really the essence of the work that we're trying to do is humanizing people, right? It doesn't matter if you're Palestinian or you're Israeli, losing someone is is the same pain. And, and this shared tear, this shared eye, um, on the bottom in Hebrew, it says, boys and girls refuse to be dead. Um, which is sort of, I think, a play on slogans that they use at protests. They usually say, um, you know, Israelis are not. Jewish and Arabs, they yeah. to be enemies. Exactly. So, okay, Robbie, which one did you well, want to talk go about? Go back to the one with the flower that we had before. The boy, this yeah, that's one. one. Yes. Um, I was at a meeting with Palestinians and I showed them the catalog. And this guy started to cry because it's his cousin who died in Gaza. There were three, one of them was his cousin. And it was so extraordinary. So he said, um, I gave him the catalog, obviously. 
and he said he's going to um, send it to the mother of this child. The father was killed as well. So you see, we can keep flipping through Christopher a little bit. These prints are beautiful and our, our artists have been ge very generous. And um, for everyone here today and anyone who makes a contribution to the parent circle of $500 and above can receive a print of one of these illustrations. Now only one can be printed. So you have to act quickly um, because yours may have already been selected. I love this one too. Um, mm -hmm. So if you would like a print of one of these illustrations, um, we, we can send you one. All you need to do is make a contribution of $500 and above to the parent circle um, on our website today. Um, it's thank you. To say that it's going, the money will go towards the summer camp, which yeah. was the whole idea, because it's also for children. Hello. So, Bushra, hi, Marhaba. Oh. Everybody, Bushra is joining us. She, this is her first time speaking to. Uh, well, you've you've been to the United States and spoken here live. I've been there with you in New York um at uh in lincoln center and that was spectacular and now we have you here by zoom and i'm very excited for you to be here with us it's important that everybody has the translation if you go onto the bottom there's a little globe icon click english and that way um, we have our fabulous translator with us basim and he'll be translating for bushra bushra welcome what was it like? You were there on the day of the exhibit, at the night of the exhibit. What was it like for you? And you were with your daughter. What was it like for you to see the exhibit and, and see these illustrations? What did you experience? أنا في هذاك اليوم كنت يعني أول ما فتت شفت كمية العدد الأطفال يعني أفرق كثير هذاك اليوم حسيت شعور ألم قديش في إميات تعدد قديش في إميات عانن بفقدان أولادهم وعلى طول لما يعني صار في بالي يوم ما أفقدت محمود كان صعب علي جدا هذاك اليوم كنتي نفس الإشي حكيت يوم ما الله يعين أمياتهم أبياتهم اللي فقدوا أولاد أطفال زي هيك يعني كان يوم جد مش قادر أوصف قد إيش كان مؤلم إلي بالنسبة إلي وفي نفس الوقت يعني كان المعرض كثير حلو ممتاز إنهم يعني الإسرائيليين بيحسوا بأطفالنا كمان أطفال الإسرائيليين بس إنه حرام حرام أطفال مثل هيك يموتوا شو ذنبهم هذول الأطفال إنه يروحوا ضحايا في 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 حرب في في يدفعوا ثمن هم ما إلهم ذنب فيه Did we lose Bassam or, or that was the end? That was the end? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, Bushra, your, your daughter Seema was with you um, that night, I understand. And she had been with the parent circle youth that whole day and spent um, the whole day with people, Israelis and Palestinians that she had met at the summer camp and through the young, and our young ambassadors for peace program. And then she came with you to the exhibit. What was that like for her? And what was it like for you to have that, have her with you? Uh, المخيم الصيفي سيما مشتركة لكن يا ماما مع الشباب 
كان كثير يوم جميل لاني انا اول مره بنكون انا وبنتي في نفس اللقاء كان يوم حلو ومميز جدا اليوم ما دخلنا على المعرض زي ما حكيت لك يعني بنتي تفاجأت في المعرض يعني حتى سالتني اللي يما اللي سوى المعرض هذا فلسطينيه ولا اسرائيليه حكيت لها لا هم اسرائيليه اللي سووه متضامنين مع الاطفال اللي قتلوا في الحرب انهم بتهمش يعني ضد هاي الحرب ان يقتلوا اطفال فيها فكانت يعني مفاجاه المعرض عجبها كثير و وهي مشاركه دائما في 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 لجنه الشباب في مع وبتشارك كمان في لجنه المراه كثير شاركت معي معنا سيما في المخيم الصيفي لل... كثير مبسوطه كمان عائلتي كلها منضمه للمنتدى الحمد لله امم That's wonderful, Bushra. And and tell us about Mahmoud. Tell us a little bit about Mahmoud and your your journey over these past years. Um, you said your your one your whole family is part of the parent circle, and and that's because of your loss. So you share a little bit with us. يعني أخبر عن فقدة محمود ولا عن عائلتي والمنتدى يعني كيف انضمينا للمنتدى um, both a little bit about Mahmoud what the, on the day tell us the story a little bit about the story of the day that he was killed and what happened to you since محمود كان أكبر أولادي كان أحلى أولادي كان شاب جميل جدا البنات كلهم يتمنين إن يحبوا محمود كانوا يتغوين له كثير محمود كان أول فرحة في حياتي لما استشهد محمود كان كان اول ما اول ما جبت محمود كان هو شمعة حياتي شمعة الدار لكن لما استشهد محمود انطفت هاي الشمعة وصار عنا ظلام قاعد انا بحاول اني انا اضوي في هالدار شوي شوي يعني ارجع هال شوية من الظلام اللي صار في الدار لكن قد ما بحاول اضيء الدار بتضل فيها عتمه ان محمود مش موجود فيه اول ما محمود استشهد كان عمره 17 سنه كان في توجيهي قدم امتحانات التوجيهي كان في احداث عندنا في البلد كان الجيش بدهم يطلعوا يهدوا بيوت عندنا في البيت لكن البلد طلعت وتصدت لهي الجيش عشان ما يهدوش البيوت وكان من ضمنهم طبعا محمود انا ما كنت افكر انه محمود كان معاهم انا كنت افكر انه محمود قاعد يدرس في البيت سمعت صوت رصاص فوق هذاك اليوم حكي لا شعوري انه قد صرت ادور على محمود في جوا الدار ما لقيتهاش حكيت لابو محمود مش في جوا البيت راح دور لي عليه طلع ابو بات على البيت يدور على محمود بعد ما طلع ابوه بشوي سمعت صوت اسعاف انا كمان انا صرت مش عارف شو اساوي يعني صوت الاسعاف هاي كمان هزتني بزياده طلعت بدي ادور عليه مش عارف اطلع لانه في كان طخ وفي ضرب حجار وفي غاز وفي مش عارف اطلع من البيت شوي اجى ابن جيراننا حكى لي قديش محمود منيح صاوب ومنيح اخذناه على المستشفى في هذيك اللحظة طلعت من البيت لا همني ضرب حجار ولا همني رصاص ولا همني جيش ولا همني أي إشي طلعت أجري من البيت مش عارف وين بدي أروح لقاني في هذيك اللحظة أخويا وحكى لي في شخصي محمود منيح بس بدهم يعملوا له شوية عمل يعني بدهم يعملوا له عملية وقراي على المستشفى يعني متأمل إني أنا أشوف محمود يعني منيح وأقول بدي أحاكم محمود اللي ما ردش علي وقعد في البيت 
لكن مع الأسف لما وصلت للمستشفى لقيت أبوه باب المستشفى بضرب على راسه بحكي لي محمود راح شو يعني محمود راح ما ما حبيت أسمع هاي الكلمة إنه محمود راح يعني يعني محمود راح راحت الحياة راحت الدنيا راح كل شيء حلو في حياتنا انتهت حياتنا سواء تغيم علينا نهائيا علي ما بدي حتى بعدت من وجه أبوه ما بدي أسمع هاي الكلمة لدرجة إني أنا نادوني أشوفها ما قدرتش أروح أشوفها يعني بديش أشوف محمود ميد لحد اليوم أنا ما شفت محمود لما أخذوه لإني أنا ما بدي أشوف بديش أفهم حالي إني أنا محمود ميد مات وراح انتهى داري عندي يعني مليانة صور لمحمود على أمل إن محمود يرجع لي بعدها حياتي طبعا اتدمرت انتهت ولادي صاروا هملت الدار هملت الولاد هملت حياتنا كلها قعدت تقريبا حالة ألف سنين لغاية كانت في صديقة منضمة في المنتدى اسمها مبعوات كان اسمها حكيت لي بشرة شو رأيك تنضمي معانا للمنتدى حكيت لها أنا لا مستحيل أنا أحط إيدي في إيدين إسرائيليين قتلوا ابني في شو بتحكي يعني مستحيل ظلت عدة مرات تحاول معي أنا طبعا ما رضيتش في يوم حكيت لي بشرة تعالي اشربي عندي فنجان قهوة رحت أنا عندها على البيت وأنا قاعد عندها بتفجر واحدة إسرائيلية دخلت على البيت أنا أول ما شفت هاي الإسرائيلية طبعا كنت بدي أطلع من البيت ما حبيت حكيت لها أنت ليش شو تعملتي فيا جيت بدي أطلع من البيت هاي الإسرائيلية كانت روبي دامي حبيبتي حكت لي بدي أحكي معك شوي حكت لها أنا ما بدي أحكي معك حكت لي بس بدي أسألك شوية عن محمود ابني حكت لها محمود ابني راح فأضطريت يعني حكيت قعدت فطبعا لما أنا قعدت معها أنا داير وجهي لها ما بدي أشوفها وهي تحكي صرت هي تسألني عن محمود وأنا أجاوب فيها طالت صورة حكت لي وأنا كمان أنا فقدت ابني وقعدت تحكي هذيك اللحظة نسيت إنها هي إسرائيلية أو عدوة أو هي مين ما هي هي إم فاقدة الألم واحد الجرح واحد نسيت شو ديانتها شو هي هي إم فاقدة ألمنا واحد وجرحنا واحد على طول درت حالي عليها قعدت أحكي معاها حكيت لها حرام حرام ليش بعدها طبعا أصرت فيني أنا أدخل في المنتدى حكيت لها لا قلت لها تعالي عندنا زيارة على المنتدى لما رحت أول مرة على المنتدى كان في لقاء المراكب لقاء الحوار كان في 15 إسرائيلي 15 فلسطينية أول ما فتت أشوف الإسرائيليين والفلسطينيين عبطوا في بعض وضعوا سأقول شو بيحكوا هذا شو بيساوي شو بيعملوا ليش هيك عبطوا في بعض لكن بعد ما قعدت سمعت لقاءات قصصهم معاناتهم الألم اللي هم عايشين فيه روحت على البيت حكيت لازم حكيت مع حالي قلت أنا لازم أكون مع أبوه ليش ما أكونش مع أبوه اللي إحنا نمنع هالفقدان نمنع هالألم نمنع هالوجع مش شرط إني أنا أحمل برودة وأروح أو حجر وأروح أقاوم علشان أنا أصطد بطاط إني أنا كنت في الأول كنت ناوية إني أنا أنتقم لإسمي وقت الجندي اللي قتل إسمي لكن بعد اللقاءات عليها وشفت الإسرائيليين أنا كنت أفكر كل الإسرائيليين هم جنود لكن مع لقاءاتي عرفت إن الإسرائيليين هم فيهم ضحايا مثل ما مثلهم فاقدين يعني متألمين ما بتهم هالإشي اللي يصير فينا وفيهم وانضميت للمنتدى 
طبعا اولادي رفضوا رفض طابع اني انا اكثر منهم كذا واني هم حاطين مع الاسرائيليين لكن شوي شوي اقنعتهم انهم يجوني لدرجه كانوا لما يجوا على المظاهرات كنت الحقهم واحكي لهم يا بنموت سوا يا بنطلع سوا فيطلعوا معي على البيت يرجعوا شوي شوي خليتهم يفكوا هاي الشغلات كلها وضميتهم معي للمنتدى من اولاد ومن بنات الحمد لله هم اعضاء واشتركوا في كل اللقاءات كل الحوارات تقريبا وانا هي من اليوم مع طول في المنتدى ومبسوط كثير في المنتدى ان شاء الله غير نضل في المنتدى لغايه ما نحقق السلام نحقق ان ما نفقد حدا وما ما حدا يفقد سواء اسرائيليين او فلسطينيين وإن إحنا نعيش في سلام وأمل أهم شيء. Thank you, Busha. We're so happy to have you with us and today here and in the forum in general. Robbie, you played such an instrumental role in in Busha's transformation, and really, you guys, the story shows the essence of the work that we're doing. You were sort of the the powerhouse behind bringing, creating this partnership between Betzalel and this exhibit that Or curated and the parent circle. Why was it so important for you to participate in this? Oh, wait a second, you're on mute. Daniel. This year I wanted to say something about Bushra because I am so grateful to have been a little part in your life and that you could find a way sometimes not to wear black. Not always, but sometimes. And I love you very much. And I'm very grateful that you are in my life. And I've watched you convince the hardest of hearts of our message. And it's extraordinary to see you running dialogue meetings and all the work that you're doing. And I love your kids as well. You know that. So this exhibition for me was something extraordinary because, you know, who will remember these children? These children are just numbers or people in a newspaper, and the only people that will remember them are their parents. And if you think about the parent circle, how many people in the world know about David, my son, who was killed? How many, how much, uh, how grateful I am to have shared his life with so many people and to meet people all along the way who knew him. But these children in Gaza are just a number in a newspaper and the New York Times for the first time published pictures of all these children with their names. But for me, the fantasy of illustrations and particularly the ones that have this softness about them that are really for children and that should go into children's rooms. And what a unique tool this could be in a children's room to try to explain the sanctity of life and to say that some children are a lot less privileged than, than most and that they live in Gaza and that their lives are in danger and that they live in Sterot and they live in Ashkelon and all the Israeli towns on the border and everybody is in trauma. And so for me to come to the exhibition and to see this gesture that came out of compassion and out of pain and isn't it extraordinary that we can put this all in this catalog and people can see it? And I'm hoping that we can use this to illustrate to the whole world what the price of conflict, what is the price of this madness? What happened in this war? I mean, what changed? What happened was we just had more fancy weapons, that's all. And nothing good could ever come out of it. And I must say that, oh, I am extremely grateful that we had that conversation on Zoom and Blue, and that you immediately said yes. And um, it's been difficult because this is a really hard job and you did it all on your own virtually. And so I think we need to applaud you for that. And, um, and I thank you. And I hope that thousands of people all over the world will be able to see this exhibition. They deserve to know that there are people who care and the sanctity of human life. 
Thank you, Robbie. I want to leave some time for questions. If you have questions, please write them in the Q&A box. Um, I'm going to start looking at them. We did have a uh, someone in the chat asked a question. If somebody could, because my Hebrew isn't very good, uh, what the Hebrew says on this illustration. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's actually irrelevant. It's, a, it's like a note to all. Uh, there will be a, a, a different work in the same style that one of the illustrations sent it to all, I guess, before the exhibition took, just to show her style. It's nothing to do with the work itself. That's what I understand. Okay. <laughs> and maybe you Not shouldn't tell work. them. Ma? You shouldn't have told them. We can uh, talk Just them. make something up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a lot of interest in bringing this exhibit all over the world. I mean, people are asking for it to come to Boston, for it to come to the UK, for it to come to the US. We don't have any plans like that right now, but um, I guess we're open, right? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. Um, and yes, a lot of it probably will come down to funding. Um, yes, but I think it's a wonderful tool for us to be oh, able yes. to, to give a message. You know, I, I very much, we have done a lot of art projects in the parents' circle, um, plates, cartoons, photography that's traveled all over the world, usually with two members from the parents' circle who could explain um, what the message is because our message isn't local. This is an international message of reconciliation. It's an international message against polarization. So I hope that we can do that. I have no idea, but I think we should talk about it. Yeah. And, you and, say, people, or, and I mean, what do you think? Um, I think uh, it depends what... Uh... what we can do together. Um, I must I mean, say, I forgot to mention it earlier, but uh, the day that Robbie called me and uh, asked to do something with the, with the illustration to do some kind of collaboration was really meaningful for me. I think it was important for us, the illustrators, like Amit said, to do some action, action and call for change. But when you told it touched you, and uh, that was that saying the illustration was important to, the, to you, and also what Bushra said right now that she, that her, your daughter couldn't believe that Israel is made this illustration. Those, that was it was the most important. Uh, out of all of it. Well, we have a lot of questions coming in about, first of all, how to get a print. So Christopher is going to write that in the chat. He's going to put in a link in the chat where you can see the prints that are still available. Um, is it that link? 68 children? I thought it was a different link, Christopher. There you go. 68 children prints. So parentscirclefriends.org slash 68 children prints. And you can see which ones are still available for a contribution of $500 and above. You can have one of the print of your choice. Lots of people are asking about how much money do we need to raise to get this to the US? I am prepared to help with finding funding to bring it to the UK. Um, Will there be a way to bring this to the UK? So we're excited that you're excited. <laughs> and- um, it's a red, we can't go to the UK, sorry. It's a red. <laughs> well, <laughs> the well, crowd yeah. is raging. Um, Robin's asking about whether any Israeli or Palestinian members of government have seen the exhibit. And if so, what has been their response? And are they familiar with the parent circle? Well, actually, Mossi Raz from uh, the Merits Party was there. And um, I think I've been thinking a lot this week that we should send a catalog to several parliamentary members. I think they should see 
another story. So I'm considering doing that. And it's important that they know about this exhibition. I wish we had more coverage, but you know, you have to do something so awful to get yourself into the paper. And actually the prints were in Haaretz, right? And um, that was good. But the exhibition itself is something that shouldn't be lost. It should be seen again and again by as many people as possible. It's not about selling the prints for that. Selling the prints here would be wonderful because it can go to the summer camp, which we do every year. But it's also about knowing and understanding the Israeli message here that there are people who think differently and who are compassionate. And also that, you know, this is the consequence of war. People don't understand what that consequence is. Look at me, look at Bushra. We are the consequence of this madness. Rafi, what was it like for you to live through the last cycle of violence, the war? Who did you ask? Rafi, Rafi Tam. Ah, well, um, I don't know. I think it was one of the saddest times was watching, you know, I, I was talking to Bassam from the parent circle on the first night that the war started. And this is the madness of how we live. So Bassam says to me, listen, Robbie, I think I can see on the television that there are rockets in Tel Aviv. You better go into the safe room. He's telling me a Palestinian is pushing me into a safe room. And then I was thinking how we keep repeating over and over again the same thing. And here's the consequence in this beautiful exhibition. It doesn't matter how many children were in Gaza and how many children were Israeli. They were innocent. They didn't do anything. They didn't deserve to die. And what is the future? That's what worries me. What are these children who live on the border of Gaza and what are the children in Gaza? How are they going to grow up? What are they going to be like? How much hatred will there be if we cannot do something to get them together? And by the way, or oh, I'm going to try to get a catalog to each of these families in Gaza. I think I have a contact. I think it's important that they should see that somebody cared. Yes, it's really important. There's actually someone here that works in Gaza um, who wrote in the Q&A that they work in Gaza via the Center of Mind Body Medicine's founder, Dr. Jim Gordon. And he would love to send him a copy of the illustrations if compiled in a book. We need this exhibition <clears throat> in the US East and West Coast. Okay, well, um, he should be in touch with me if he wants to do something specifically. Okay, so we'll put Ravi's email in the chat. Um, I, I mean, the, I don't know if everybody's seeing these messages that are coming in in the chat, but there's so much overwhelming support. Um, I, someone wrote, I am deeply moved by what has been shared at this gathering and by the exhibition, remembering the children who were senselessly murdered. I'm humbled and profoundly inspired by the courage of the parents of the parent circle. Yes, this is an international message against polarization for peace, for remembering the common ground of humanity that connects us so we can teach our children the sanctity for life. Thank you to Carter. Um, Bushra, I don't know if you're still, oh yes, you're with us. I see you in the dark. Um, but somebody wrote to you specifically, um, oh, and to Orr too, so much gratitude to Orr for your bravery doing this exhibition and to all the artists for using this artistic medium. Love and prayers to Bushra for your sincerity and being brave to talk about Mahmoud and sharing him with us all. Please do come with this exhibit to the UK. So I'm overwhelmed by this uh, support and, and you've got us all thinking about, you know, how we can use this to spread the message of the parent circle, which is to humanize the other, to make the enemy into someone with dreams and hopes and families and people who live lives with uh, fears and, and also hope for peace on the other side. Um, we're so grateful 
to not only to the members of the parent circle that are here today, we're grateful for the 600 families that are not here with us, but are here with us in spirit, the Israeli and Palestinian staff that run the parent circle, that work tirelessly, that were just um, at a school today where demonstrators, Israelis demonstrated against having Palestinians come speak at the school. Robbie was there. Um, and yet they come anyway, and they come and they share their stories and they open hearts and they open minds. We're grateful for Amit and Or who are with us today and for the 66 other illustrators that gave of their art and their hearts and their and their passion and their pain and everyone's pain because really when there's violence it's painful for everyone. People are still asking about um, the pictures and how to get their prints. So Christopher is gonna put in one last time. Um, we'll also send out an email after the webinar. Um, so, but Christopher will put in one last time the link in the chat so that you can reserve your print. Bushra, thank you. We can't see you, but we know that you're there. Um, Robbie, thank you for bringing all of this together and for being who you are. Um, and to Christopher and Basim by this, behind the scenes for making this possible. And for all of you for joining us here today, we're so grateful. Um, we have uh, just two weeks left before the end of the year. Please show us your support. This is the time that we need your support. It, this all will go to help the, the uh, children summer camp that we run every year. And we are so blessed to have you all. Does anyone want to say what's one last thing or a meet? No, okay. Well, good, good, good morning, good night, wherever you are. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very much.